Uh, salam, uh, brother Shahid Tahir. You're welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming. Yeah. So for people who don't have the hardcover version, uh, like I said, for people who bought it, I have people from UK, US, Canada, uh, around the Europe who have who has have ordered. I have somebody from uh, Taiwan, Singapore. They've all ordered their copy, and you will enjoy reading word for word translation and having it, uh, you know, uh, given to you the way you want in the translation. And uh, for people who have bought the copy, they can testify to you and tell you how, uh, you know, the translation is with the help of God. But for the PDF version, like I said, I have the link above. But for people who have direct links to me, if you need a PDF version, yes, I can. And yes, sorry about the, the light above because uh, my positioning wasn't that uh, fit enough to, to get the light off from my head. So sorry about the light if in case it's disturbing for your view. Uh, so, so today's topic is let's question the man made hadith, right? Why do people rely on hadith? Why do they like to uh, follow hadith? And you hear people saying, hey, how can you practice Islam without a hadith? How can you do your salat without a hadith? How can you do this, do that without the hadith? Then they will go further ahead to blaspheme against God and tell you without the hadith, we cannot understand the Quran. So which means God is not competent enough to explain his own book. That is the mindset of an hadith follower. The mindset of an hadith follower is to tell you that the Quran is useless without the hadith. If you hear any sectarian speaking, this is how they will speak indirectly. They won't tell you the Quran is useless. They will tell you the Quran cannot be understood without the Hadith. And yet, they said the science of Hadith is more difficult than the Quran. So, uh, if, if anybody is in his right senses, how can you say something which is explaining the Quran is now even more difficult to access and even understand than the Quran? There's no logic in this. You understand? So mostly you hear this from the scholars, from the ignorant ones, among the sectarians, they all say the same thing, right? So we are here to question the hadith. And critically, I'm going to use some top hadith which are classified as sahih. Sahih means authentic, which is right to be used, right? So who classified it? Their own scholars. It wasn't the prophet, wallahi lazim. The prophet himself never classified any single hadith on earth as sahih. I wonder if we have any Quranic verse which is called Sahih. We don't have Sahih in this Quran. It's only the man-made words which they try to give certification to it and say Sahih and some they classify as Da'if and you still find it in the books they have. Right? So logic is not playing a role in the mainstream uh, section of the uh, Muslims. <clears throat> Yeah, brother Isa Watson, they like to quote chapter 4, verse 59, uh, where they say, Ayu, uh, So they, they shorten the verse. They would not even go further for it to say, They don't do that. Uh, Usman Jibril says, I need the PDF version. Uh, yeah, 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 Aha, uh -huh. so we are going to analyze based on the Quran to see, are we supposed to just follow what people say or do we need authority or authorization from God to uphold man-made sayings with the word of God, right? And has God explained his own book? You the one claiming the Quran cannot be understood. Have you ever finished studying the Quran? If the answer is no, how can you be foolishly following what the scholars are telling you? Because the last time I checked the Quran, Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So the question is, do you have knowledge that the Quran has not been explained? God says, Tafsil al kulla shay'in, chapter 17 verse 12. Tibiyan al kulla shay'in, chapter 16 verse 89. Huh? Then he says, Wa ahsan al tafsira, chapter 25 verse 33. Best in explanation. Right? So when we come to tafsil, when we come to bayan, when it comes to fasr, that's uh, tafsir of the, and the tafsila, and then bayan, God has already done everything. So if that is the case, what is left for you, the human being, to do? Again, 
other than trying to understand the ways of God. Do you see the problem? Yes, Ozozani uh, son, and they use chapter 3, verse 31, where he says, In kuntum tuhibun Allah fattabi'uni. That, that is, if you should love God, then follow me. They keep using all these verses out of context. They leave the siyak out. Always check the siyak also to, to fit the verse. Check the context of the verse to fit the verse. It's only when you cannot find an answer to a context in the verse you are reading or verses you are reading, that is when you move to another chapter. You don't move to another book to go and find answers. Just like the sectarians will tell you, you need Asbab al nuzul to, to understand the Quran. The last time I checked, there is no one single statement where God says there is something called Sabab al nuzul or Asbab al nuzul It doesn't exist in the Quran. These are the doctrines of the man-made hadith. Right? It's good. So now, first of all, I take you to Quran chapter 39, verse 23. Most of the mainstream Muslims don't even know that the Quran is called Al Hadith. Right? They don't know. If if a sectarian, you find sectarians telling you that, oh, you the Quran alone followers, you are hadith rejectors. Are you a fool? Are you a fool? The Quran itself is Al Hadith. So if he says, if you say I'm hadith rejecter, am I rejecting the Quran itself? What is the logic here? You should be more uh, specific. Say I'm rejecting man-made hadith. Fine, that I uh, willingly tell you. <laughs> yes, I reject them. Because why? They are garbages. When I say they are garbages, people don't understand why I use the word garbages. They say, oh, you are very harsh. Yes, because you are comparing them with the words of God, which is a foolish thing to do in the first place. Why am, am I calling it garbage? Even in food, we can have garbage. And then even if a message yeah, is useless, it's, because it's called, classified as garbage. For people who don't understand English, please find your uh, vocabularies, find your dictionaries, and then assess it. What is the meaning of garbage? A food which is useless, which, which, is, which has nothing to be done with, again, is called garbage. Same goes with a message which is useless or worthless. It's called garbage. So if I use the word garbage, if you don't understand the notion why I'm using garbage meaning, if the Quran is sufficient for guidance, huh? God says in chapter 17 verse 9, Indeed, this Quran guides to that which is more appropriate so if I have something which can guide me more appropriately, do I need something else? Which means the other thing is worthless, it's useless. So to compare to this, the other thing is garbage. Simple. Good. <clears throat> so when I use such terms, uh, Salam, uh, Brother Alam Shah, Salam. When I use such terms, people who don't understand thinking, oh, this boy is rude, he's harsh, he's mean, what do you think? It's just like you love a woman and you see somebody trashing the woman out and saying mean things, bad things about her. Of course, you get offended. You say, oh, but that person is rude. But you should have asked, what's the reason first? Does a person have a reason for saying what he said? That's why you have to investigate. Quran chapter 49 verse, uh, verse 6 tells you when an immoral person brings you a news, you have to what? Investigate. Fatabayyanu. Right? So you have to investigate. Why is this person insulting this lady or insulting this book or, you know, condemning that book? You should ask. So I'm going to give you some of the examples why I say the hadith cannot be uh, are worthless. Right? <clears throat> so Quran chapter 39 verse 23. Let's assess the Quran. That is Surah to Zumar. And we see what God is going to tell us concerning what or which is the best hadith or what is the best Hadith we have to follow. Yes, so Surah to Zumar. Then we go to verse 23. That is uh, where God says, Allah nazzal al ahsan al hadith. That means God has sent down the best what? Hadith. Now, for sec most, most mainstream Muslims don't, own, don't actually know that the Quran is classified as the hadith. Hadith. They don't know. Wallahi lazim. They don't know. So if you say, if the uh, sectarian should ask you, do you believe in a hadith? Please, don't tell them no. Don't make such a mistake. When a sectarian asks you, whenever a sectarian asks you, do you believe in hadith? Just say, yes, I believe. You understand? Now he'll be confused. He'll say, but I thought you were rejecting hadith. Then you ask him, which hadith? 
So now he will start make the beans uh, like specific with what he's asking you. So he said you are just you reject the hadith of Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, Sunan Ibn Isa. Then you say, aha, are there hadith of God? He will clearly, clearly tell you no. <laughs> then you tell him, okay, anything cannot come in from God. I cannot hold them in high esteem. So I'll put them to the trash. <laughs> yeah. Sayyid Adam says, Brother Shai, please, which of this was is the best to buy the Quran from? Yeah. If, if you live in UK, I recommend you should buy from payhip.com. Payhip.com. I think it's owned by a, a UK firm. Payhip.com. You go online, you see uh, on my page here, you see it's on the top of this program. It's there. It's a UK firm, payhip.com. If you are, you are based in UK, that's the easiest place you can order from. Yeah. You find a price, the price there also. Uh, it's now, it's still on offer, so you can find it there, actually. Yeah. Yes, so let's move on. Yes, Sister Naz Khan, yes, we believe in the best hadith, yes. So God says, Allahu nazzal al ahsan al hadith. Then he says, Kitab al mutashabiha. Then he says, what? Mathaniya. The, the, the mutashabiha, Mathaniya, I'll come to that. Then he says, Takshairu minhu juludu al lazina yakshawna rabbahum. Thumma talinu juluduhum wa kulubuhum. Now let's see what the verse is telling us. The verse says, God has revealed or sent down the best hadith, meaning God knows there are other hadith out there. Right? When we say hadith, people don't actually understand the notion of hadith, right? For instance, if you go to chapter 93, Surah to dua you go to the last verse, I think it's verse 11, the last verse, where God told the Prophet, فَأَمَّا بِنِيمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّسِ Right? فَحَدِّسِ uh, Rizwan, Rizwan Haider, you can inbox me in my Facebook inbox. Just send me inbox, salam, that you need a PDF. I'll send you, inshallah. Aha, uh -huh, so, فَأَمَّا بِنِيمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّسِ this hadith, meaning to narrate, it is used in a verbal form. Uh, that is the second form, for, form of a verb. It has a shadda. So, fahadis. Uh, so, hadith means to narrate, uh, to talk about it, to discuss it. So, if God has done you a favor, it is normal to discuss. You tell your neighbors, your friends, oh, God has done this favor to me, that favor. So, that is what we call hadith. So, the hadith of the Prophet himself can be found in the Quran. Uh, the, the favors God has done to him that he has to speak out everything, you find it in the Quran. So people will tell you, oh, the hadith of the Prophet, are you a fool? The hadith of the Prophet itself in the Quran. Who made you know the Prophet if not the Quran? Who made you know the Messenger if not the Quran? Right? So you rather want to uphold hearsays to tell you about the Prophet, about the Messenger? Quran chapter 13 verse 43, it clearly tells you, in order to know that the messenger himself is a messenger, it is through the book, Al-Kitab, that you have to know. You see, uh, Salah Muqtabu is saying, long time. Aha, uh -huh. so when we say hadith, people misunderstand the notion. Look, you can find the hadith of Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, in the Quran. Hal ataka hadith Musa. Has the narration or the discourse of Musa reached you, come to you? Huh? Musa, you can find his full hadith. He, he is the number one prophet with the most stories in the Quran. His story is full in the Quran, more than any other prophet. His story is number one, Musa. And people will be wondering, why, why, why? Because this Quran itself, the essence of the Quran is to what? Uh, what? To, to narrate to the children of Israel most of what they dispute about. So that is the purpose of the Quran in another sense. Quran chapters 27 verse 76 gives you that answer concerning the children of Israel, right? So this is why Musa has his stories a lot in the Quran, right? Uh, let me see here.
Yeah, I'll come to that. It's a Watson. Yeah, the clergy, they, they lie to people and tell people that the prophet has given authorization. We will see that. There is no authorization from the prophet. And it's, it's a simple issue. So when we go to the pro, uh, Quran, we find the hadith of Musa alayhi salam. Hala ataki hadith Musa. Quran chapter 79 verse 15. Quran chapter 20 verse 9. You find it. Then we have the hadith of the Gashia. That is the judgment day. What will happen concerning the judgment day? It's all, also called hadith. It's a narration. It is a discourse. Right? It is a type of a discourse which has to be told. It's like a kisas. Uh, sorry, kasas. So when we say a uh, story, like a narration, something which has to be narrated, right, to you. So a discourse has, it's like a, you know, a talk which has a long speech to be addressed to the people, right? So, so has the hadith of the gashia, hala ataki hadith of gashia, Huh? Has it reached you? Where can you find it? In the Quran, chapter 88, verse 1. You read till downwards. It's there. Has the hadith, huh? halata ke hadith, huh? has the hadith of Ibrahim wa daif, daif mukramin, has it reached you? That is Prophet Ibrahim, Ibrahim and his honorable guests. We can find the hadith in the Quran. Right? Then is uh, Yusuf, alayhi salam. Prophet Joseph and his brothers and his father Jacob. We can find their hadith in the Quran. Go and read chapter 12. The, one of the best stories of, from God uh, in the Quran. The best stories of stories in the Quran. You find it. Chapter 12 verse 2. That is Joseph. And when you read chapter 12 verse 111. It clearly tells you that it is not a fabricated hadith. The story of Yusuf, salam, when you read in the Quran, it clearly tells you it is not a, a fabricated hadith, which is a discourse, a narration. It is not fabricated. The reason why God made this emphasis here, because we have hadiths out there which are fabrications, stories, lies. For instance, the people telling you the prophet married a six-year-old girl and started sleeping with her when she was nine years old girl. Are you in your right senses? Seriously. Whoever, whoever out there is, depend, is defending this, this garbage is a fool. Wallahi lazim. You are a fool to defend this scenario. Right? Good. Now, nowhere in the Quran does God go tell you to marry kids. Right? Especially six years, nine years. <laughs> right? Good. So it is not a fabricated hadith, but a confirmation of what was before it, uh, elaborating everything uh, as guidance and mercy for people who believe. Chapter 12, verse 111. Right? So now when we say hadith, after God telling us in chapter 39, verse 23, God has revealed the best hadith. The book itself, the Quran, the book, Al-Kitab, is full of hadith here. We find the hadith of Ibrahim, Hadith of Musa, Hadith of Joseph, Hadith of Jesus, Hadith of Muhammad, Hadith of... Mention it. You mentioned the prophets. Their Hadith is here. So he has given you the best Hadith. <laughs> and you leave this to go and listen to Hadith of people whom God has never mentioned in the Quran. They will tell you uh, Abu Bakr, uh, Sayyidina Ali, uh, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, whatever, whatever garbage they have, they keep narrating you to, to you garbage of stories. Right? Stories after stories. Stories after stories. Lies upon lies. That's all they have for you. So God has revealed the best hadith. A book. Meaning the hadith can be found in a book. It's a narration. You find it in a book. Similarly repeating. When you take the story of Musa alayhi salam, when you read it in Surah to Ta, chapter 20, when you go to chapter 27, you find something similar again. So you'll be thinking, ah, is God repeating the same thing? Is similarly repeating, not the same, similar. It's different from the word same. In Arabic, when we say sawa, sawa, it means same. When you say uh, uh, mithla or Something is mutashabiha or tashabaha, something resembling something. It doesn't mean it's the same. Right? Good. So similarly repeating, when you take the story of Isa alayhi salam, you read it here, you can go to another chapter, you read something similar, not the same, something similar to it. Right? God will say something in this chapter, you go and find something similar again in another chapter. Similar, not same, similar. 
So God says, that's the skins. Hey, salam, brother. Naganka. That's the skins of those who fear their Lord. When we say, Yakshawuna, this type of fear is a sign of respect, not like a fear like you are running away. Hauf. No. That's why Quran chapter 20 verse 2 says, Ma anzalna alayka le Qur'ana le tashika illa tazikiratan liman yakhsha. The word yakhsha here is a sign of respect. When you respect somebody, we can we use the act of fear to explain that. Right? So if somebody respects his boss, doesn't mean he fears his boss. If you fear him, you never even work for him. But because you respect him, that is what we call that the act of fear in a different level. Not like you're scared. You see? So God says, Manzana alayka al Quran li tashika illa tazikiratan liman yaksha. Chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3. Except to serve as a reminder for whoever fears. Right? So then God says, the skins of those who fear their Lord shiver thereof. Does their skins and their hearts soften to the remembrance of God? Zikrullah. That is the guidance of God. So the best hadith is the guidance of God. Then he says, by which he guides whomever he wills. As for one whom God leaves astray, then he will have no guide. The reason why God will leave you astray, because God says in chapter 16 verse 104, those who do not believe in the verses of God, God will not guide them. You see? So if God, if you don't believe in the verses of God, that means he has left you astray. He could have forced you to guide you. So he will leave you astray. And no, who else can guide you? Because the guidance can be found in the book of God. And you said you are not going to believe in the verses of God. So who will guide you? Sahih Bukhari, keep following him and let's see on the day of judgment. Now let's move on. So we can see clearly where we can find the hadith and we can find them in the Quran, not outside the Quran, but where? In the Quran. You see? So now let's move on. So then I take you to chapter 52 verse 34. Now we have seen why God is saying the best hadith because you can, you can choose to follow Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that's your choice. You think it's a good hadith for you to follow. Oh, well, I have no issue with you. That's your problem. But you tell me I cannot follow the Quran without your garbage hadith. It means you are not in your right senses. It's just like a, you are given three choices. You, you are given three biscuits to choose. Huh? Then out of the three, they give you one which is the best. And you said, no, 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 no. I cannot only take the best. I need one another thing. You are a greedy person. You, right? You are a greedy person. Apart from that, if you say, okay, this best one cannot stand on its own, except this one supporting, that means this one is not the best anymore. That is your argument, which you like logic here. So when you go to Quran chapter 52, verse 34, God is clearly telling us something here. He says, Faliyatu bi hadith mithlihi in kenu So let them bring a hadith. Huh? Like it or an hadith, like it, if they should be truthful. That's the challenge here. We are not talking about you bringing something below the Quran and say, oh, after the Quran, the second best is Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. You are not using your right senses when you do that. God says, Faliyatu bi hadith mithlihi, like it. You just bring, it's simple. This, this command is simple. Let them bring an hadith or a hadith like it. Like it. Is your hadith like this? No. Sahih Bukhari, is it like this? No. Sahih Muslim, is it like this? No. Jamia Tirmidhi, like this? The answer is no. So are you truthful? You are liars. Bal ataynahum bil haq wa innahum lakazibun. God has brought them the truth, but they are the liars. They are liars. Wallahi lazim. Kazibun. Right? <clears throat> yes, that's right, Sister Naz Khan. Yes, that's right. Yes, uh, Isa Watson. Yes, that's true. That's the manipulation we faced all over. Right? Yes, uh, uh, brother Alam Shan, I'm coming to the hadith. I'll be narrating this hadith as well. So it's coming. So now we can clearly see in chapter 52 verse 34 that God says, let them bring a hadith like it if they should be truthful. They don't have it. 
Do they have it? The answer is no. You ask any scholar, is there any hadith like the Quran? He will tell you no. If he's honest, he will tell you no. Then you ask them, then why? Why is God's book not sufficient? Is it not sufficient? Quran chapter 29 verse 51. Is it not sufficient to them that we have revealed to you the book being recited to them? Is it not sufficient? Uh, Zarak Homeboy says, please, is there any verse in the Quran to pray five times a day? No, there is no verse like that. There is nothing called five times a day in the Quran. There is no verse which talks about Salat being five times a day. No. Unless people twist the verses out of context and put their own words there, fine. That is what the Hadith followers do. Like Sunnis, Shias, Tariqa, Tutijaniya, whoever, they all manipulate verses and insert them there. Right? So any scholar who says this Quran mentioned five Salat, I'm available. Find me. We can have a dialogue only on that. I would love to handle you on that. Simple. Now, we go to Quran chapter 45 verse 6 to verse 8. Right? Quran chapter 45 verse 6 to verse 8. So we can clearly see that you can never bring an hadith like it. So if that is the case and God has revealed the best hadith, why leave God's book to go and follow garbages? If you are in your right senses, will you do that? Obviously, you are not. So Quran chapter 45, verse 6 to verse 8. To simplify the issue, let's see what God is asking. God says, Tilika ayatullahi natluha alayka bil haq. Fabi ayi hadisi baad Allahi wa ayati yuminu. Then he says, Wailun li kulli afakin athim. Yasma'u ayatullahi tutla alayhi. ثُمَّ يُسِرُّ مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَلَّمْ يَسْمَاهَا فَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ Do you see it? Do you see what God is saying? So let me explain to you. These are the verses of God which we recite to you, Muhammad, in truth. Remember, Quran chapter 75, verse 16 to 19 says, لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعَجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا جَمَعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا كَرَعَنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعُ قُرْآنَ and when we read it, then follow its reading. Then God says, Thumma inna alayna bayanahu. He didn't say, Thumma inna alayka bayanahu. So the bayan of the Quran, the clarification of the Quran is based on God, not upon the Prophet. So if that is the case, now God is reciting the verses of God to him by telling him, Tilika ayatullahi natuluha alayka bil haq. Right? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Said Adam. Yes. <laughs> Muktabulu said, to search medicine, we have to go to pharmaceutical shop. Yes. But they are rather searching what? Medicine in grocery shop. Quran is full of Sahih Hadith, but they are looking for it in dustbins. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. You understand? They put the, the words of God aside and they go to the dustbin to search. It's just like giving somebody buffet, free meat and everything to choose. And he says, no, he's going to the dustbin to search for leftovers. It doesn't make sense. Hey, salam, Garus. Naganka, salam. Long time, bro. Long time. Yeah, Zarak, homeboy, the five prayers come from the hadith. It's not from the the. the the Quran and actually uh, let me see if I can help you how they got the five prayers right uh, how they got the five prayers they got it in a particular uh, hadith right if I yeah where they said the prophet went to the sky to bring 50 prayers right he says 50 prayers. Uh, the hadith, I can give you the reference. Please, you can set it up. Let me give you the reference. It's Sahih al Bukhari 349. In book reference, book number eight, hadith number one, right? So let me tell you the hadith and then you judge it for yourself. It says what? Abu, Abu, uh, Abu Dar narrated. Sahih Bukhari, uh, Imam Bukhari wrote this, right? And he says Abu Dar narrated. 
Allah's messenger said, While I was at Mecca, the roof of my house was opened, and Gabriel descended, opened my chest, and washed it with zanzam water. Then he brought a golden tree full of wisdom and faith, and having poured its contents into my chest, he closed it. Then he took my hand, ascended with me to the nearest heaven. Listen carefully. When I reached the nearest heaven, Gabriel said to the gatekeeper of the heaven, Listen. Gabriel now said to the gatekeeper of the heaven, Open the gate. Gatekeeper asked, Who is it? Gabriel answered, Gabriel. He asked, Is there anyone with you? So that, that, that gatekeeper is blind. He can't see. So he has to now ask, Is there anyone with you? Then he said, <clears throat> Yes, Muhammad is with me. He asked, Has he been called? Gabriel said, Yes. So the gatekeeper, the gate was opened. We went over the nearest heaven and there we saw a man sitting with some people on his right hand and some on his left hand. When he looked towards his right, he laughed. When he looked towards his left, he wept. Then he said, Oh, welcome, pious prophet and pious son. I asked Gabriel, Who is he? He replied, He is Adam. So according to this hadith, Muhammad met Adam, right? So now to cut the long story short, let me go to the funny part. The funny part is here. According to the narration, Ibn Hazm and Anas bin Malik said that the prophet said, right? Let me write the reference here. I'm writing it in the comment section. Then people can have it. You can look it up, right? It is Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari 349. Then you go to the in-book reference. In-book reference, you go to what? Book number eight. Hadith number what? Number one. Uh, English, if you need the English reference, English reference, you go to what? Volume one. Book number eight. Hadith number 345. I've written it in the comment section. Let me put it on highlight. Okay, I've highlighted it above. If you check up above the comment section, you see it. That is a reference for the hadith, right? Now, so I'm going to read the funny part of the hadith. The funny part says, the prophet said, Allah enjoined 50 prayers on my followers. Listen carefully. On my followers. <laughs> Not him. Allah enjoined 50 prayers on my followers. Not him. Listen carefully. The 50 prayers was for his followers. Not him. Listen to, take, pay close attention to how to descend to a discourse when you are listening to somebody talking. Or a speech. Listen carefully. There are certain details you have to pick up. Then he says, When I return with this order of Allah, I pass by Moses who asked me, What has Allah enjoyed on your followers? Not the prophets. These 50 prayers, according to the hadith, the prophet was not part of it. So listen carefully. So then, he told Moses, what, uh, Moses told Muhammad, What has Allah enjoyed on your, on your followers? <laughs> I replied, he has enjoyed 50 prayers on them, listening again, on them, not on us. He, did, he, the prophet, is not part of the 50 garbage prayers you have. So listen carefully. Mm -hmm. So then he said, I replied, he has enjoyed 50 prayers on them. Moses said, go back to your Lord. Now Moses, who is a dead man, who, is, who was already dead, <laughs> He is now giving prophets the command, go back. Listen carefully. I thought you said the prophet Muhammad was the best of creation. He's the best of everybody. Really? Oh. <laughs> so now a dead Moses was telling him, go back to your Lord and appeal for reduction. Is, are, are we doing business here? What is this? Peace, uh, brother uh, Jatim al -Katan. What? What is this? He's telling Muhammad, alayhi salam, go back to your Lord. This, look at the command. Command. It's not even an advice. Go back to your Lord. Then he said what? For your followers will not be able to bear it. 
And ladies and gentlemen, please learn how to descend to a discourse. Dis descend carefully. The, pray the 50 prayers he went to collect, he is not part of it all. He, Muhammad, he is not part of the 50. Listen carefully. He wasn't part of the 50. It was only enjoined on his followers. <laughs> so Moses now told him, go back to your Lord. Your people, he didn't say you, Muhammad, cannot do it. Your people cannot do it. So then what happened? For your followers will not be able to bear it. So I went, listen, the Muhammad says, so I went back to Allah and requested for reduction. So God has made a command. You requested, you appeal for changes. You forgot when Abraham made an appeal to God. Huh? When he made an appeal to God and he told God that don't destroy the people of Lut. What did God tell him? You forgot when Nu alayhi salam, chapter 11, verse 40 downwards, when he made an appeal to God concerning his son being annihilated by God, what did God tell him? And you foolishly accept these doctrines, telling you that that fake prophet in the hadith went back to God to negotiate. So let's see. So I went back to God and requested for reduction, and he reduced it to half. La kalimati. Remember, Quran says, there is no alteration to the words of God. Innama amuru iza arada shay'an an yakula lahu kum fayakun. Right? If God says something to be is be, you can't change it. La mubaddila kalimati. The hadith is now telling you he went back to God and he negotiated and he said reduce and God did what? He reduced. So the kalima of God has changed. But let's see what happens. So he reduced it to half. When I passed by Moses again, he informed him. Where was Jibril all this while? Where was Jibril? Was he sleeping? Because I remember Muhammad was not walking. It is not like you are walking in the market or going to uh, uh, the airport to pass the same way. It is the big heavens. <laughs> Muhammad went. So where was Moses standing waiting for Muhammad? I don't understand. And where was Jibril? So Jibril was on standby or sleeping or off duty. So now what happened? And he reduced it to half. When I passed by Moses, he informed him about it. He said, go back to your Lord. Your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned and requested for reduction and half of it was reduced. Then I asked, I passed by Moses and he said to me, return to your Lord for your followers will not be able to do it again. So I returned to Allah again. And he said, these are five prayers. Listen carefully. So after God changing from 50, so now he says, these are five prayers and they are equal to 50 in reward. <laughs> so which means previously, the 50 prayers, the blessing for each, each salat is one. Listen carefully. So now since God has given you five prayers, which means one prayer is 10 blessings. So you have what? 50. So now listen to this gibberish. <laughs> these are five prayers prayers and they are all equal to 50 in reward for my word does not change oh my god oh my god what is this ladies and gentlemen are you with me the fake god and the fake uh, prophet in the hadith listen what they are saying right this has nothing to do with the god of the quran it has nothing to do with the prophet of the Quran. Wallahi lazim. This is an imposter. So listen carefully. Then he said, These are five prayers and they are all equal to 50 in reward. For my word does not change. I returned to Moses and he told me, Go back once again. Look at Moses now giving Muhammad command. Back and forth. So according to the hadith, excuse me to say, according to hadith, the, the Muhammad in the hadith is so foolish that he doesn't even know what he needs for his people. And he doesn't even know <laughs> what to decide for his people. So a dead man who has been dead for centuries before Muhammad, he met him in the sky and he's telling him, your people cannot do it. So go back, go back. And you are telling us, insulting God for us, telling us that God himself doesn't even know what the people want and what the people can do. After God says, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa usaha. Huh? 
So God has to now put something upon you that you can't. So Moses was more smarter than God and the prophet, according to your, your doctrines. Right? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So now, the last time when Moses told him to go back after the five prayers, listen to what Muhammad says. He says, now I feel shy. I feel shy of asking my Lord again. Then Jibril took me till we reached Sidrat al-Muntaha, the low tree of the outmost boundary, which was shrouded in colors, indescribable. What is this? No, excuse me, excuse me. So God gave him five prayers. Where is the rakat? Where is this? Because there's no single hadith which they have from this hadith where he went to take the salat, where he says the rakat. How many rakat were they supposed to do? He doesn't have it. According to your own scholars, they are saying when the prophet went for the five salats, the rakat was two for each prayer. Two, 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 two. How did he become four, three, four, three, four, three? Like a formation. How did he become like that? Salam. Alaji uh, al-Mahmud. Long time. So how did the prayers change from two rakats and he became four, four, three, four, two? Like a formation. Is it Barcelona or Madrid formation? I don't know. What? You believe this garbage? Do you see why I call it garbage? Now, the hadith here is telling you Now guys, push the door. Pull it. I have posted the hadith, the link above on the comment section. Please. Check it for yourself. You can go to sunnah.com. That is the best collection of hadith in the world. Sunnah.com. The Aranka is the best. Check it there. You see it for yourself. Both the Arabic and English version. Right? And this is the hadith. They say the prophet went for five, uh, five prayers after negotiation. <laughs> I wonder if Bill Gates does the same negotiation also. So ladies and gentlemen, let me deviate from, not deviate. So uh, the brother who asked me about the five salat, this is how you got the five salat, right? It is not from the Quran, right? God never con commanded 50 prayers, nor more or less to even negotiate and reduce it to five. This is garbage. So if you are doing it, day of judgment, remember to go to Bukhari to take the, the rest of your salary because it's not coming from God. There is no way God would tell me to come to work one o'clock and close at five o'clock. Huh? Somebody else will now bring words and say, go to two o'clock, uh, go 10 o'clock and close at seven o'clock. Who is going to pay me the rest of the hours? Is it God? God never told me to go 10 o'clock and close seven. God told me go one and close five. And you are going 10 to close seven. Who is going to pay you the rest of the hours? Go to your God, who is Bukhari, to pay you the rest. Good. <clears throat> so now... We go back to 45 verse 6 to verse 8. Tilika ayatullahi bilhaq. These are the verses of God which we recite to you in truth. Fabi ayi hadith ibadallahi wa ayati yuminun. Now for people who don't understand the grammatical choice of words, we think why is God says Fabi ayi hadith ibadallahi wa ayati? Mentioning two things. They will say that. Why did God mention Allah and ayatihi? Because the ayati he comes from Allah. So he has to mention two instances for you to understand. It's still talking about one thing. Because if God says, Fabi ayi hadithi badal ayatihi, it will confuse you in grammatical understanding. So God has to now mention God and his verses together. You minun, which one will you believe? The sectarians never answer this question. They will say, oh, this has nothing to do with the Sahih Bukhari hadith. They try to defend themselves. This is what they do. It has nothing to do with that garbages, those garbages I just read out from. Those garbages, you rather put it next to the words of God. Will you reason at all? Do you reason? No wonder your scholars are scared to face me. With this arrant garbage nonsense. God is clearly asking for the hadith about Allah wa ayati yuminu. And you confidently tell me you want to believe in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, giving you these garbage narrations. So we will see who gave you the authority to follow the hadith. We are going to see it. Today I'm here. Right? No problem. 
So God says, Wailun li kulli afakin athim. Woe to every sinful liar. Every sinful liar. They are the ones who try to defend Sahih Bukhari. If God says, Fabi ayi hadith ibad Allahi wa ayati yu minu, they will say, Oh, Ahi is not talking about the Sahih hadith. No, no, no. This is talking to the mushriks, the kafirs. They, they take themselves out. No problem. Then God says, Yes, ma'u ayati lahi. Where can we find the ayati lahi? Is it your Sahih Bukhari? Sahih Muslim, Jamia Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, Sunan Ibn Nisa, bring them. Let's see. The verses of God can only be found in the book of God. Quran, al karim Quran Al-Azim, Quran Al-Majid, Quran Al-Hakim. That is where we find the verses of God. So God says, Yes, ma'u ayati lahi. He hears the verses of God, tutula alayhi, being recited to him. Thumma, you see rumus takbiran. And then he insists, then he insists or persists arrogantly. I'm telling you for a fact, every hadith follower who actually knows himself following hadith is arrogant. When you mention the verses of God, he's not interested. When you mention the ulama, Sahih Bukhari, Jamia Tirmidhi, Muwatta, uh, Sunanan Ibn Isa, he's satisfied. Then he tells you, MashaAllah. Uh, uh -huh. When you mention the Quran, he say, Ah, are you also a Quraniyun? Are you also a Quranist? He's not focused on what God is telling him. He's focused on you, trying to tag you and say, Are you a Quranist? Oh, because we have heard so much about you. From here, BBC or CNN, or is it Fox News? So my Allah Yasmaha as if he has not heard the verses. Those verses you are recited to them, they act as if they have not heard them. If you like, use the best grammatical eloquence to address a mushrik and tell him about the verses of God and see what they will tell you. You are basically telling the persons, let's follow the verses of God. He's telling you, okay, Ahi, how many salat do you do? How many times do you pray in your day? Huh? Where did you know how to know how to do the salat if you don't follow Sahih Bukhari? See, he's interested in defending Sahih Bukhari. No wonder the devil say he will mislead most of you. Yeah, Quran chapter 7 verse 16 to 17 to 18. Yes, go and check the promise the devil did. Most of the people will become ungrateful. And do you know ungratefulness? Somebody you are willingly trying to help, but they don't need your help. Ungrateful person. For Bashir will be Azab and Alim. Give him news of uh, what? A painful punishment. So be guaranteed if you are any Sahih Bukhari follower. Wallahi lazim. Wallahi lazim. God will punish you. You think I'm lying? Find me for a live dialogue. Let me prove it to you. And then you prove it to me where God gave you Sahih Bukhari to follow. Wallahi lazim. I have made the vow. I say I'm ready to give you a reward. I've mentioned it in my videos. I'll pay you if you can prove it to me. Wallahi. Let's go on. So God clearly tells us this in chapter 4 verse 87. He clearly tells us. He said what? Woman as the kumina lai haditha. When we say haditha, it is a narration, a discourse. So God says, woman as daku, mina lai haditha. Who is more honest? Who is more truthful than God in hadith, in narration? Who is more truthful? Is it Sahih Bukhari? Is it Sahih Muslim? Who? So why don't you uphold to the words of God? Because God's word are the truthful words. Do not be of the doubters. That is the truth from your Lord. So what else does the human being want? Do you see, you see the problem here? You leave the words of God and you are giving credence to words of people God never authorized you to follow. Bring me one authorization where the Prophet gave Imam Bukhari the chance to write hadith. You don't have it. Has the Prophet met Imam Bukhari before? No. Somebody born in the city called Bukhara at his time, and now we call that country Uzbekistan. He was born there. Where was the Prophet born? In Arabian Perusna. So why will you now go and uphold Somebody who never met your prophet, he wrote garbages and you are upholding it. Husband Allah wa al wakil. Now, Quran chapter 31, verse 6 to verse 7. 
verse 6 to verse 7 clearly says wa minan ilm wa yattakhizaha huzuwan ulaika lahum azabun muhin verse 7 wa iza tutula alayhi ayatuna then he says walla mustakbiran ka allam yasmaha ka anna ka anna fi uznayni waqra then god says for bashiru bi azaban alim and among the people or among mankind is one who what patches he, he he will do he will like willingly go to patches he will buy huh? then god says lahwal hadith the hadith has a datal tarif which is what a marifa al hadith now when we say lahwa something which diverts you attention it's just like when you're talking to somebody and he's playing you understand his attention is diverted you're talking to somebody and he's watching tv he's into the lahwal television so the tv is diverting him so we say lahwal hadith it is a particular hal hadith which can divert you away then god says liyudilla ansabilillah in order to stray from the way of god which is the way of God? The Quran. That is the way the Quran, the messenger followed. That is the book the messenger followed. Come out and prove to me if he follow any other book apart from the Quran. He followed the Quran and alone as well. Their own hadith says, Quran. They say the character of the prophet is the Quran. So what else do you need? Hadith. Was his character hadith, Sahih Bukhari? So God says, and among the people is one who purchases what? The lawal hadith, the diversion hadith, in order to stray from the way of God. Without what? Knowledge. They don't have knowledge. Most of the people who believe in hadith don't have knowledge of the hadith himself. Neither to talk of the Quran. They don't know the Quran, neither to talk of hadith. If you quote a verse, most of the scholars out there don't know even the verse you are quoting. They don't know which chapter it is. Wallahi lazim, put it to the test and try. They don't know when you quote a verse, they don't know the chapter. And when they speak about hadith itself, they cannot quote a reference. They will tell you, oh, Akhi, this is in Sahih Bukhari, I think so. I will find a reference. You keep waiting 10 years, he will never bring you the evidence. I'm talking from experience. Yes. And I'm willingly, I'm out there trying to face the scholars. They should come out. They will never come out. What they do is they come to my page, write nonsense, change their profile picture, write nonsense, send me text messages, try to send people to call me and say Jab, gab, rubbish to me. That's all. That's all they do. They will never step forward because they, they are paymasters who stop paying them. And I say paymaster, you know, uh -huh. the ones who pay them to speak the gibberish out there. Uh -huh. So then God says, Ulaika lahum azabun muhim. Those will have a painful, uh, a humiliating punishment. You see, so they mislead from the way of God. Who's the one? They take the verses of such hadith. Who's the one in mockery? Hmm? They accept it. When the well, he says the Prophet married a six years old girl, they like it. Oh, mashallah. Nana Aisha is our mother. Look at the foolish ideology you have. Come and open the Quran. Show me where it says Nana Aisha. Or it says the, the wife of the Prophet is called Aisha. Come and show me this verse. I'm waiting. Prove to me where it says Prophet married a lady called Aisha. Is, is it here? Come. Show me. And you see some Muslims even believing in these garbages. And then upholding these narrations and say, oh, our mother Nana Aisha. Who? Who? Nana what? Who gave you that? Why is Atutula alayhi ayatuna? And when we when our verses are recited, what? To him, listen carefully. Then he says, Wallah, Wallah mustakbiran. Then he turns away arrogantly. Just like the Sahih Bukhari followers do. Any Sahih Bukhari follower here, whether here, whether out there, when they listen to the verses of God, and especially when you're telling them what God says, they turn away arrogantly. They hate it. They don't like it. Then God says, Ka'allam yasmaha, as if they have not heard the verses of God being recited to them. They don't like it. Then God says, Ka'anna fi uznaihi wakra, as if there is deafness in their ears. Both ears they have as if they have deafness. They don't like it when you're talking about the Quran. 
Then God says, For Bashiru will be Azab and Alim. Then give him news of a painful punishment. Wallahi, you shashi, you get the punishment on the day of judgment. Don't worry. Why is it that when you, the mushriks, you, when you are dying, why is it that when you say the angels will come and ask you, Marabuka, Madinika, eh? uh, Manabiyuka, Maketabaka, when you say Maketabaka, what is your book? Why don't you say Quran? Why well, Quran alone? Why do you say uh, uh, sorry? Why don't you say Kitab or Sunnah? You should tell the angels Quran and Sunnah and see the dirty slaps he will give you. You think the angel cannot slap you? Go to chapter uh, uh, eight, verse fifty, and read and see how the angel will slap people when he is taking the soul away. You think the angel cannot slap you? Go to chapter eight, uh, chapter sixteen, and read from twenty-eight to twenty-nine and see the dirty slaps the angel will give you. Yes, at the time of your death, not in the grave, at the time of your death. Yes. So we have seen the evidence for these people who actually purchased Lawal Hadith. So that the sectarians will tell their people, Lawal Hadith means music. Look, it's the biggest lie on earth. Anybody who tells you music or singing is haram, ask him, why is it that the Quran, God says, waratilil Qur'ana tartila. The word tertil means you are doing it in a monotonous way, like in a singing form. So if music is haram, which means reciting the Quran in a monotonous fashion is haram as well. But they don't reason. God says, Waratil al Qur'ana tartila. Chapter 73, read from verse 2 downwards. You see it. In the night, when God told the prophet to get up in the night, he says, He should do the rattal. Uh, tertil. You recite it and you read it in the, in the uh, like a, in the music form. That's why when you hear the kiraat, the kiraat you've been hearing, the Ali Jabir, uh, the Mishari, the uh, what, what do you uh, Rahman, Abdul Basit, whoever you are listening to, why do you feel the music of the recitation? Why do you feel it? That is what we call tertil. If you say music is haram, then that is haram too. So stop fooling yourself. Your scholars are happily listening to music in their rooms and you are here fooling yourself thinking you are religious. <laughs> Try to tune in and see Saudi Arabia when they are having their birthdays. Go and see the music they dance to. <laughs> and go and see the women who do belly dancing in front of them. You are here fooling yourself thinking you are religious. Just because some garbage hadith tells you music is haram and you don't use your reason, you think music is haram, then stop doing the tertil of the Quran and see. We go. So Quran chapter 7 verse 33. Do you have authorization to associate books with the book of God? Do you have it? Where did God give you that permission? Huh? Where did God give you that permission? Yes, Nazkan, that's true. Even kids, when they hear it, they know it's a music. Yes, that's what we call music. Even birds, birds, they sing in the morning. Why don't you stone them? The sectarians, I don't see you stoning the birds. They sing to you in the morning, glorifying God in the morning and evening. The birds are singing. Kill them because music is haram. <laughs> because according to you, you said dogs are haram. <laughs> and you forget in Surah al kaf chapter 18, verse 9 to verse 21, that youth who believe in God, they had a dog with them. You say dog is haram also. Kill your dogs. Why is it that uh, these man-made doctrines have made people so dumb and foolish and when you are telling them the truth, they are agitated, irritated. Who is this guy? He is insulting our wise scholars. Let your scholars come and face me. Is it a big deal? You see the embarrassment I will handle to them? With that foolishness, you are hope, upholding man-made books and you think you are religious. Leaving a long beard and wearing short shorts, uh, uh, this thing. And then thinking you are religious? You face me and see that you are not religious on that day. So, chapter 7 verse 33. God is going to give us the line of information concerning Sultan, authority. If you have not been given authority to associate something with the words of God, don't do that. 
is haram. When you do it, it is haram. Uh, well, the Bukhari books will always do that. You know, people uphold, uh, Tairis Elis, people uphold the doctrines of Sahih Bukhari more than any other doctrine in Islam. Wallahi lazim. They only recite the Quran and read it for blessings. That's according to them. They are not reading it to understand. You Okay, find anybody who claims to be an Hafiz of the Quran, who has memorized the Quran. Put him to the test and see whether they understand the Quran. Out of 100%, you might only get 2% who understand what they have memorized. Wallahi lazim. I have spoke to a lot of Hafiz of the Quran. They are ignorant. <laughs> they don't know what the Quran says. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm not joking with your heads. The Hafiz of the Quran, they are just like somebody who has memorized a song. Do you know a song? Music. Look, when I was growing up, I used to watch Indian movies. I know a lot of Indian songs. But ask me what it means. I have no idea. A lot of the Hafiz in the universe you have, the world you have today, they are just like that. They have memorized it. They can sing it. Wallahi, but they are empty-headed. I have, I have had a lot who called me. I've spoke to a lot of them. They are ignorant. <laughs> so stop thinking when somebody memorized the Quran, they are genius. What? Kids, five years kids, don't they, don't they memorize the Quran? Even a parrot, parrot has memorized the Quran. You think it's a big deal? It's just like a donkey. You are carrying volumes without knowing what it contains. That is the example of people who carry the Torah as well. Quran chapter 62 verse 5. Go and check for yourself. How can you memorize something without knowing it? Useless. Quran chapter 7 verse 33. Kul inna maharrama rabbi al fawahisha ma zahara minha wa ma batana wal ithma wal bagya bi ghayr al haq wa an tushriku billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultanan wa an taqulu ala llahi ma la ta'lamun. These things I just recited are haram. God says, my Lord only forbids, he's telling the messenger to say, my Lord only forbids immoralities. When you say immoralities, this is obscenities. Now an act of, you know, sexual conduct, misconduct. Mazohara minha, what is apparent, which people can see, is forbidden. Wama batana, and what is hidden, you have to refrain. Wal itma, deliberate sin, a sin which you do it deliberately, not by mistake, deliberately, itma. And to what? Oppress without what? Right. Without the truth. And to associate with God what he has not given you authority or send down any authority. It is also haram. Now, the top notch. And to say what you do not know about God. Now, this is totally haram, but that is the biggest blaspheme on the universe, in the world today. Go to every religion in, this in the world. What do they find them doing? They are speaking about God, what they don't know. Prove it, they can't prove it, but you see it. You see a mushrik telling you, oh, God says we should pray five times. Prove it. He's looking at your faces. So, Ahi, are you saying it's not in the Quran? I didn't say it's not the Quran. Prove it. Simple. You said we cannot find how to do salat in the Quran. We can only find it in the hadith. And I said, bring it to me. You, you can't. God gave you the hadith. You can't answer. Prove that you have sunnah in the Quran, the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. Can you prove it? You can't prove it. Then you go again. Do you even understand the verse? Chapter 59, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 59. Do you even understand the verse? You don't. Chapter 3, verse 31. Chapter 3, verse 31. Do you understand the verse? You don't. You go ahead. Chapter 53, verse 3 to verse 4. Do you understand the verse? You don't. So you keep quoting verses. Chapter 16, verse 44. Do you understand the verse? You don't. You think I'm lying? 
let your scholars come out and face me. Let's go step by step on the verses and see how ignorant your scholars are, especially the Sunni scholars. Wallahi lazim. So when I keep telling them none of their scholars can face me, they think I'm bragging. I'm available. I've never been hiding from anybody. Where are they? They hide behind their doors and throw stones. And so don't mind that guy. He's, he, he, he's a madman. Don't mind that guy. He doesn't know anything from the Quran. Really? No wonder your scholars are scared. <laughs> so chapter 7 verse 33 clearly tells you, and to say what you do not know about God is haram. So refrain. But then the top notch of the verse, And to associate what you do not, uh, what God has not sent down authority with God is haram. So refrain. When you take something to associate with God, it's forbidden by God. Please refrain from this. It is not allowed by God. So refrain. Yeah. So that's Quran chapter 7 verse 33. It is haram to associate anything with God which he has not given you any authority. Has he given you authority to associate Sahih Bukhari with him? The answer is no. Has he given you authority to associate the Sunnah of Muhammad according to you, Sunnah and Nabi? Has he given you authority to associate it? The answer is no. The only Sunnah the Prophet followed is the Sunnah of God, Sunnah Allah, Quran chapter 33 verse 38. Hmm? Quran chapter 33 verse 38 God never gave him any other sunnah but that sunnah to follow that is sunnah Allah ma kana ala nabiy min haraj fi ma farada Allah lahu sunnah Allah fi allazina khalawu min qabl wa kana amru Allah qadaran magdura so the command of God is a decreed fate that is the sunnah of God which he has commanded all the prophets who passed all the messengers who passed so why do you take the sunnah of God to give it to the prophet and say sunnah to Nabi? Are you in your right senses? I don't think so. Quran chapter 30 verse 35. Chapter 30 verse 35. You claim Sahih Bukhari is the book of God. You claim God asks us to follow Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Are you sure? God says, Am anzal na alayhim sultanan fa huwa yatakallamu bima kanu bihi yushirikun. Chapter 30 verse 35. Am anzal na alayhim sultanan fa huwa yatakallamu bima kanu bihi yushirikun. Or have we sent down to them an authority? Authorization. Huh? And it speaks of what they associate with God, with him? Has God sent down that authority to you? Are you sure? Has he done that? If he has done that, the simple answer or the simple thing I'm going to tell you is, فَأَتُوا بِكِتَابِكُمْ Listen. أَمْ لَكُمْ سُلْتَانًا مُبِينَ فَأَتُوا بِكِتَابِكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ سُوَادِكِينَ Quran chapter 37 verse 156 to 157. Or do you have a clear authority from God that you have to follow Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim or any Sunnah apart from the Quran? Then God says, Fa'atu bi kitabikum in kuntum suadikin. Then bring your book if you should be truthful. If you are truthful, bring it, let's check. If you are honest, you bring it. Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, bring it, let's check. And we are going to check them right now before I end my program. We are going to check those books right now and see if you are truthful. Do you have an authority from God? Yeah. Wallahi lazim. If you can bring me one book from you, apart from the Quran, to show that this is an authorized book from God, Wallahi lazim, I will submit to you and I will give you 1,000 euros for free. Wallahi lazim. And I'm going to do it right now. Right? Now, if you go to the Sahih Muslim books, they are Sahih Bukhari. Look, the top Hadith books the sectarians follow in the world uh, is Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari comes number one. Sahih Muslim comes number two. So whenever these sectarians are dealing with you, if they don't find their answer in Sahih Bukhari, they bring Sahih Muslim. 
while forgetting that Quran chapter 68 verse 36 to 38 clearly says malakum kaifa takumu am lakum kitabun fi tadrusun inna lakum fihi lama takhayyarun how do you judge do you have a book wherein you study am lakum kitabun fi tadrusun inna lakum fihi lama takhayyarun do you have there in whatever you prefer or choose do you have such a book <coughs> Do you have it? Because they will tell you, oh, akhi, when the Quran mentions something, the Hadith explains it. Look at the foolishness again. The book of God, Tafsil al kulla shay'in, chapter 17, verse 12. Tibiyan al kulli shay'in, chapter 16, verse 89. And still, you claim when the Quran mentions something, the Hadith, the garbage you have, has to explain. If you are learned, will you say this? No. No, 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 you not, you not. So now I'm taking you to the book of Hadith, Sahih Muslim, the book of Zud and Softening Heart, right? Now, whose authority did uh, Muslim write this with? Whose authority? Who gave him the authority to write this? We are going to see the authority. The authority comes from what? Hadab ibn Khalid al-Azdi told us, Hamman narrated to us on the authority of Zaid ibn Aslam listen carefully Zaid ibn Aslam not from God not on the authority of Prophet Muhammad not from God not on the authority of Prophet Muhammad on the authority of Zaid ibn Aslam and apart from him on the authority of Atta bin Yasser Abu Said Khudir reported that Allah's messenger said, when they want to lie, this is how they started. On the authority of, I, do, I don't see on the authority of God. When we say authority in Arabic, is Sultan. Sultan. And I've already showed you chapter 7 verse 33. To associate anything with God which he has not given you the Sultan, his haram. So this hadith on its own is haram. Every hadith book you have apart from the Quran is haram. Wallahi, I'm saying it. It's haram. Those books you are basing your evidence, you are doing your five prayers. It's haram. Those books are haram. Wallahi, lazim. Wallahi, they are haram. Here, <clears throat> reported that Allah's messenger said, according to the Arabic version, he says, لا تكتب أني ومن كتب أني غير القرآن فليمه وحدث هني. He says, do not write anything from me. Do not write anything from me. This is what the hadith says. Hey, salam. Thank you, uh, Stanley Abura. Long time, bro. The hadith says, do not write from me. Then he says, and whoever writes from me, anything from me other than the Quran, he should what? Efface it, meaning wipe it out and narrate from me. Now, this is the interesting part. We can see the word kataba and we can see the word hadith. They are two different things. They are not the same. Right? Narration is different from writing down. We all know if right now, this modern, modern day, if I should meet Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo, right? When I come home, I will narrate what happened. It doesn't mean Cristiano Ronaldo gave me an article to go and publish or to go and write. No. If I should meet him on the way, hey, hi, Cristiano. I, when I come home, I will narrate to my family. Hey, guess who I met today? I met Ronaldo. Does that mean Ronaldo wants me to go and tell the world what he just told me? No. So, according to the Hadith, he says the prophet says la taktubu anni wa man kataba anni ghayra al-qur'an falyamuhu wa adhisu anni salim wait me salim he says do not write from me except uh, and whoever writes uh, uh, from me other than the quran shall efface it and narrate from me so this reference can be found in Sahih Muslim 3004, 3004. In book reference, book number 55, hadith number 92. 
Yeah, in the Quran, we already have three salats. That's it. Zarak, homeboy. We have three salats. I have all these videos on YouTube. You can check uh, my YouTube channel. It's above the, this link. My, my program, you see the link above. You can find the videos, the lectures. Watch it after that. You can send me a message if you don't understand anything. Then we can go over to understand. Yeah. So uh, the reference is Sahih Muslim 3004-3004, book number 55, hadith number 92, English reference, book number 42, hadith number 7147. That is 7147. So even if you don't get it now, you can play back later the video, you can get the reference and then search it for yourself. So what is the hadith saying? Uh, yeah. He says, that reminds me, brother, regarding the prayers, is it acceptable in Islam to combine the Zul prayers as a prayers at the same time and also Maghrib at the same time as I hear some Islam? First of all, brother Sayyid Adam, there is no Salat called Zuhur Salat. There is no Salat called Asr Salat in the Quran. Neither is there any Salat called Maghrib Salat. Yes, there is Fajr Salat, there is Isha Salat, yes. The names of those salat can be found in chapter 24, verse 58. You find the two salat, the names, Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. And then we have Salat al-Wusta, al-Wusta, right? So it's only three salats. There is no four or five. Even there is no Salat al-Juma'ah in the Quran. There is no word, uh -huh, a full two words combined, which says Salat al-Juma'ah, Salat al-Juma'ah. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing. So it is only Ya you will lazina amanu is a new dia list salat min yomil juma is yomil juma not salat al juma. So there is no such thing. So the salat we have are only three. As for combining, before you can combine something, there has to be something before you combine. It's just like if I have a glass and a water. Before I can combine them, they have to be the glass and they have to be the water. So without glass and water, how can I combine? So first of all, Zuhur Salat doesn't exist. In the Quran, from God, it doesn't exist. Asr Salat doesn't exist. You understand? So combining them, you are still following Hadith. So if you say you have to combine them, which means you admit there are five Salats, but now you are now joining them together. No. Put that notion aside. Approach the Quran with a new mindset. Trying to act act like you don't know anything. You, want, you now want to understand something. Remember, Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says, Wala taqafum bi ilm. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't know something, according to God, don't follow it. So what do you have to do? In the summer, wal basara wal fa'ada kullu ulaika kena anuhu mas'ula. Indeed, the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind, all those will be accountable or answerable thereof. So you have to apply this wisely. Investigate things before you follow. Don't just follow it because you have been told, right? And there is no way something called, there is nothing called Islamic scholar, right? Of course, they are ulama. Somebody can be an alim, even you. If you study the Quran thoroughly for years, you can become a learned person. But it doesn't mean we have something called Islamic scholars where God have put them in positions we have to go to. No, <laughs> no. Because God is Ar-Rahman, Allama al Quran. He is the teacher of the Quran. What did he tell the Prophet? Chapter 20, verse 114. Wa ilman. Yours is just to tell God to increase you in knowledge. That's it. Then you study. The more you study, the more you get the answers from the Quran. Simple. I hope you get the answer. Yeah. <clears throat> so now, let's move on. Before I'm, uh, I'll bring the topic to an end very soon. But let's move on. So now, we have seen clearly in this Hadith book I quoted, the Prophet is saying, according to the Hadith, I don't believe in the Hadith. Don't quote me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I don't believe in this Hadith. The Hadith of the Quran is sufficient for me. I'm only using this to base on evidence. Now, a mushrik or sectarian will say, oh, you don't believe in the Hadith. Why are you quoting Hadith? Are you a fool? You don't believe in the Bible. Why are you quoting the Bible to the Christians? Why are your scholars studying the Bible to quote the Bible to the Christians? Why don't you leave the Bible alone and use your garbages to prove them wrong? <laughs> Do you see how logic works? I don't believe in your book doesn't mean I cannot study your book. Neither does it mean I cannot use your book as an evidence against you. I can use it. Yes. 
If you say no, then stop using the Bible to prove to the Christians <laughs> something. Because that's a foolish thing to do according to your understanding. So why can't I use a hadith also to prove you wrong? I'm using your own hadith because the prophet says do not write anything from me except the Quran. Listen carefully. So if assuming this is true, the prophet said this, do not write anything from me except the Quran. How come you have written doctrines concerning the prophet and you attribute them to the prophet? And yet he didn't give you the authority. Neither does it come from God himself. And then you are upholding it in Islam. After God saying, in the deen, in the lail Islam, the deen belongs to God. And he says, Al-yawma akamaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu lakum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum Islam adina, chapter 5 verse 3. And he has approved, completed the religion and approved Islam as a religion for you. If he has completed the religion, the question is, was Sahih Bukhari doctrines part of Islam? If the answer is no, then you are a fool. If the answer is yes, you are the biggest fool. If you understand my answer because a sectarian if i'm asking you you are telling me if i'm following hadith I'm, uh, if i'm not following hadith i'm astray then i ask you did when god completed islam was sahih buhari part of islam at that time you said no and i'm asking you again why are you following a book which is not part of islam it's obviously you are a fool I hope you get my, my, my scenario, what I'm giving here. A sectarian will tell you, if you follow the Quran without the Hadith, you are astray. Then I said, God says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum nimati wa raditu lakum islam adina. Chapter 5 verse 3. Today I have completed your religion for you and I have completed my blessings upon you and I have approved Islam as a religion for you. So at that time that God completed the religion, was the hadith of Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, all part of Islam? The answer is no. Because according to the prophet, he said, do not write anything from me except the Quran. So it was only the Quran the Muslims had. And I'm going to prove it from the hadith. From their own hadith, it was only the, pro the Quran the prophet left for them. So he says, do not write anything except the Quran. So if you believe that is the case, then now how did Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim became part of Islam? Again, was it part of, were they part of the completion God did? If you are a sectarian and you say no, it means you are a fool. I hope, guys, I hope you are getting my point. Then why did you decide to be still remain a sectarian? Why did you decide to call yourself a Sunni? Because if you say you are a Sunni, look, let me debunk, debunk this issue here. I'm going to debunk this issue. Quran chapter 27 verse 91 to 92. Listen to the prophet. He's going to speak. Innama, he says, Innama umirtu an abuda rabba hazil, hazil baldati. Then he says what? Hazihil baldati. Lazi harramaha wallahu kullu shay'in. Wa umirtu an akuna min al muslimin. Then verse 92. Wa an atlu al Quran. Famani tada fa inna ma ya talili nafsi. Wa man dalla fa kul inna ma ana min al munzirin. What is the verse saying? The verse say, I have only been commanded to serve or worship the Lord of this city, this land, right? Who has made it what? Sacred. He has made the land a sacred land, right? Harama. That's why we have Majid al-Haram and Bayt al-Haram, which is the Kaaba, right? Then he says, Wallahu kullu shay'in, and to him belongs all things. Then he says, Wa umirtu an akuna min al muslim and I have been commanded to be of the what? Muslims, not of Ali Sunnah. Do you see? He has been commanded to be of the Muslims. Not Ali Sunnah, not Shia of the Muslims. Then verse 92 Wa an atlu al Quran and have been commanded to recite the Quran, not Sahih Bukhari, not Sahih Muslim, not Jami at Tirmidhi, not any garbage out there. Now, after this command, Famani tada. And whoever is guided, then he is guided for his soul. And whoever is astray, 
فَقُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُنْزِرِينَ Then I am only among the what? Warners. So this is the Prophet alayhi salam. He has been commanded to be of the Muslims, not Ali Sunnah. So if you are an Ali Sunni today, you are a Mushrik. Wallahi lazim. Wallahi you are a Mushrik. If you are a Shia today, you are a Mushrik. If you are a Tariqa to Tijaniya today, you are a Mushrik. You want to know why? Find me for a live dialogue. I'll prove it to you. Wallahi lazim. You are a Mushrik. Because God says, Wa antu shiruku billahi malam yunazzulu bihil sultanan is what? Haram. Why will you associate your, your doctrines, your dogmas to the words of God? Has he given you authority? The answer is no. So what does that make you? A mushrik. What is a mushrik? Somebody who does shirk. And what is shirk? Associating something to something which you don't have authority to do that is shirk. Just like somebody who believes, huh? we call it mumin because he believes the word yumin or tu'min or amana is to believe. So the belief with the mu becomes mumin. Just like somebody who is part of Islam, huh? it does taslim. So the salim with the mu, it becomes muslim. You are a muslim, a submitter. Just like we have the word shirk with the mu. So somebody who does shirk and you add the mu, it becomes mushrik. So get it into your coconut head. Thank you. Now let's move on before I end the program. When you go to Quran chapter 2 verse 170, when you simply tell the people, uh, if you simply tell the people, وَإِذَا كِيلَ لَهُمُ التَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ then they will tell you, Kalu balna tabi uma al fayna alayhi aba ana. Then God says, Awa law kena aba uhum la ya kiluna shay and wala ya tadun. And when they are told, follow what God has revealed, they say, uh, they say, in fact, we follow what we found our fathers upon. God says, What if their fathers did not understand anything, nor were they guided? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What if your father is ignorant? What if they are not guided? Have you ever studied to check, fact check people to see if they know what they are saying? That's why Quran chapter 17, verse 36 says, Wala taqafuma alaysa laka bi ilm. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge about. It's part of the hikmah God has given us. But what do you find people doing? Oh, I thought they say the prophet is the best of creation. Oh, I have heard that they say that, that, uh, that this thing is the, the sunnah. You cannot follow Quran without the hadith. Oh, I've heard that they say there is five prayers in the Quran. Are you a fool? Can't you investigate for yourself? Why must you play with your salvation? You want to become a mechanic, a pilot, a doctor? You want to study to become? Is it about they say, they say, they say? Or did you investigate to pass your exams? You investigated, right? So how come about your salvation? You are going to face your God and you are going to tell your God, Oh, the scholars told me <laughs> we have to pray five times, so I did it. What? Subhanallah. They tell me, the scholars told me I cannot follow the Quran without the Sunnah, so I believed it. What? Do you know what you'll be telling God in chapter 33, verse 67? وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَانَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَا أَنَا فَادَلُّونَا سَبِيلًا Chapter 33 verse 67, on the day of judgment, the foolish ones, this is what you'll be telling God. So don't try to fall in the foolish category. They will say, our Lord, we have obeyed our masters. When we say سَادَتَنَا, it's like when you say سَيِّدِنَا, your master. So masters, سَادَتَنَا, listen carefully. We have obeyed our masters, wakubara ana, that is what, dignitaries, people who are leaders among us, huh? the elders. Wakubara ana, father luna sabila. We have obeyed our masters and our leaders and they misled us from the way because you are a fool. Ragas. You have obeyed your masters and your leaders and they misled you from the way. You never verified. You never checked. Just because they call themselves Islamic scholars. <laughs> your Islamic scholars are scared to face me. Wallahi, I'm not any Islamic scholar. Me. 
Why, why you give that yourself such a title God never give you? Islamic scholar. What? Can you defend Islam? Or you are defending your salam? Husband Allah wa nibala wakil. So when they are told, follow what God has revealed. Hey, salam, uh, brother Kaba, God is submit a long time. How are you, bro? When they are told to follow what God has revealed, they follow what they tell you, they we follow what we found our fathers doing upon. So God says, What if your fathers did not understand anything nor were they guided? What if? So again, what is a kill alohum tabi uma anzalla kalu balna tabi uma wajadina alehi aba ana awa lawkena shaitanu yadu uhum ila azab sa'ir. When they are told Follow what God has revealed. They say, in fact, we follow what we found our fathers upon. What if the devil is inviting them uh, to their what? Punishment of the what? Sa'ir, of the hellfire. What if the devil is... Have, have you verified to see, to check whether you are being lied to? Or is this as you see the scholars having their beard, wearing their jalabab, and sit on the television, mashallah, uh, you think they know? <laughs> <laughs> hey. <clears throat> wallahi, wallahi. They are leading you to hell. Wallahi, I'm telling you. Sunnah, Shia, Tariqa to Tijaniya, uh, Salafia, Wabia, whatever Bia, 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 or, or Fia, Fia, Fia you have. Wallahi, Wallahi. They are taking you to hell. Wallahi. So reason, reason. Please, the salvation is about God, not about the love you have for the prophet. Look, you can love the prophet more than anybody for all I care. Wallahi, if you don't do what God says, you are going to hell. Yes, that's a bitter truth. Quran chapter 39, verse 19. Check what God told the prophet. Afa man hakka alayhi kelematul azab. Afa anta tunkizu manfin nar. The God is asking the prophet, can you save the one who will enter hell, who is in hellfire? Can you save him? God is asking the prophet. If you claim in your garbage hadith that the prophet will say, Analaha, Analaha, and he will save people from hellfire, come and prove to us in the Quran. Let's see your foolishness. Come, prove to us. Quran chapter 39 verse 19. God is asking the prophet. So he is the one who the punishment as a deserve the word of punishment has been imposed upon him can you save the one who incure hell who who enter hell can you save can you the prophet and you let the garbage books tell you oh analaha analaha this man will <laughs> will save you from hellfire hey you don't wake up from your sleep kindly write down chapter 6 verse 52 and check what god told the prophet Quran chapter 6 verse 52 God says ma alayka min isabihim min shay'in wa ma min hisabika alayhim min shay'in so the hisab the prophet will receive on the day of judgment has nothing to do with us neither will the hisab we will receive on the day of judgment has nothing to do with the prophet he doesn't know you Quran chapter 11 verse 40 downwards. Prophet Noah couldn't save his son from, from God. Quran chapter 19 verse 43 downwards. Concerning what? Uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. He couldn't save his father from God. Hmm? Quran chapter, is it 27? Concerning Lut. Lut couldn't save his wife from God. And you that the prophet Muhammad doesn't even know. He wants to save you. And you come and say, Analaha, Analaha. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you think we are in a cartoon, cartoon world? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing this topic to an end. So before I end, let me just give you this before I end. Yes. Yes. 
Mika. Na dira yi magana da kyau, bari magana ni aka na. Me. Yi magana da kyau. Eh me ke wurin, me kike son son duba. Fadi. Ai tita ya tayi muku mana. Ragas help help her. I'm almost done. Ha? Huh? Okay. Sorry ladies and gentlemen, just a bit. Nadira Na so kinji na kare kinji Yeah Sorry guys let me check uh, I've done it's almost 2 hours so I'm almost done sorry for the delay Anyways uh I just read uh the verse concerning when you are when you ask follow people to follow come and follow what God has revealed they tell you we follow what our fathers are doing right so now we can clearly see that the Quran is the guidance of God. And God gave you this answer in chapter 34, verse, uh, verse 6. God says, Why are you not the one who is the one who is the one who is the one and those who have been given the knowledge will see that what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, is the truth. Who will hack? Not two things. Two things were not revealed to Muhammad. Not three, not four. One thing. Right? Somebody will say, why does he say, well, kitab, well, hikmah? It's still one thing. You find the al-hikmah in the al-kitab. It's not two things. Listen carefully. Right? You find the al-hikmah in the what? In the Al-Kitab, just like when you have a mobile phone, if I give you a mobile phone and the SIM card, you have to combine them in one thing. You have to put the SIM card inside the phone. You cannot use the SIM card separately. It has to go with the phone. Do you understand how it works? So the Al-Hikmah, you find it in the Quran. Somebody will say, where? Chapter 17, verse 39. Start reading from chapter 17, verse 22, and read downwards to verse 39. Zalika mimma awha ilayka rabbuka min al-hikmah. Min al-hikmah, the hikmah is in the Quran, not outside the Quran. So when God says, well, you only muhum al-kitab wal hikmah, he didn't send two books to the Prophet. No, it's one. So God says, wa yara al-lazina utu li-ilma, lazi unzila ilayka min rabbika huwa al-haq. The word huwa is used for a masculine pronoun and is singular. So huwa is used for al-kitab, or al Quran, who are in Nahu la Quran al Karim, fi kitab in Makunun. You can see the Quran is written down in the what? Kitab. But it's still the same thing. If I say give me the book, it's still the Quran. If I say give me the Quran, it's still the book. Logic. Right. So now we are seeing that, and it guides to the path of the Almighty, the praiseworthy. That is what the Quran does. It guides you to God. So now, one of the hadith. The hadith can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari 2155. On the authority of Abu al-Yaman, listen carefully, not on the authority of God, neither on the authority of Prophet Muhammad, on the authority of Abu al-Yaman. Hmm? He says, and on the authority of Shu'aib, not me, please take me out, not me. Not on the authority of God, on the authority of Shu'aib, and on the authority of Al-Zuhri, Urwa ibn Al-Zubair, on their authority, not on the authority of the Prophet, they said, narrated by Nana Aisha, the Prophet said, why do some people impose conditions which are not found in the book of God? Whoever imposes a condition which is not in the book of God, then that condition is what? Invalid, is false. Even if he imposes 100 conditions, for God's conditions are more binding and what? Reliable. Simplify, simply 
uh, part, simple part of the uh, hadith says, Man ishtarata sharatan laysa fi kitab Allah fa huwa batil. Whoever imposes a condition who it, which is not in the book of God, then that condition is what? False. Right? Uh, Rizwan Haider, you say Atiw Rasul, the talk. I think I have, I have a, a video on that on my YouTube channel, right? And uh, it is about uh, obey God and obey the messenger. The word Atiw means obey, not follow. Follow is tabi. Taba'a or tabi. Uh -huh. So now, the reference, English reference, volume 3, book number 34, hadith number 364. That is Sahih al-Bukhari 2155. Right? That's the reference. If you want the Arabic version, is book number 34, hadith number 106. So if you play back the video later, you can get the reference. Right? So now we all know according to Quran chapter 17 verse 9 God says inna haza al-Qur'ana yadi lillati hiya aqwam wa yubashshiru al-mu'minina allazina ya'maluna as-salihat anna lahum ajran kabira indeed this Quran this Quran the Quran coming from God this Quran guides to that which is more appropriate and gives good news to the believers who do righteous deeds that they will have what a great reward ajran kabira magnificent reward right so the quran guides to guides you to that which is more appropriate quran is sufficient for guidance right just like it says quran chapter 25 verse 31 that god is sufficient as a what hadian wa nasiran uh, god is sufficient as a guide and a helper so if you have the book of god it is sufficient for you you don't need any other garbage good then again, I take you to uh, one of their hadiths. Uh, that is, the hadith is what? It's narrated by Ibn Abbas, which is the reference is Sahih al-Bukhari 5669. Book reference, book 75, hadith number 30. English reference, volume 7, book number 70, hadith number 573. What is the hadith saying? When Allah's messenger was on his deathbed, that is when he was about to die, that is the, what the hadith is saying. I don't believe in this hadith. I'm only narrating it. When he was dying on his deathbed, and in the house there were some people among whom was Umar. Umar was part of the people. Then the prophet said, Come, let me write for you a statement which you will not go astray. That is after I die. So which means according to the prophet, the Quran cannot guide them. So now he has to write something for them, which will make sure they don't go astray. After God telling you in the Quran here, chapter, 20 verse, uh, chapter 2 verse 38, that whoever will follow the guidance of God will never uh, suffer or grieve. Chapter 20 verse 123 to 124, whoever will follow the guidance of God will never go astray, nor will you suffer. After God saying that, the hadith is making the prophet a hypocrite. Now telling us that the prophet, when he was about to die, he is telling the people to bring a paper for him to write something for them. I thought they said the prophet cannot write. Oh, so when he was dying, finally he learned how to write. <laughs> so now he told them, the prophet, is. Uh, then Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill and you have the Quran. So the book of Allah is enough for us. According to the hadith, this is what Umar said. Do you see how hypocritical they are sounding? Huh? So Umar now is more smarter than the prophet. So he told the people, the book of Allah is enough for us. <laughs> the people present in the house deferred and quarreled. So they were fighting. Some said, go near so that the prophet may write for you. Now they are fighting with Umar. So they are saying, go near, go near, let him write. I thought you said the prophet could not read and write. So now finally, when he was about to die, he can write. <laughs> so he can write the Quran. But at his time, you the hypocrites, mushriks, are telling us the prophet, at the time of the prophet, no Quran was written down. <laughs> it was after him, it was written and compiled. And now... <laughs> 
<laughs> so according to you, all the 23 years of the prophet, he hypocritically stood by. He didn't write the Quran for anybody. He waited, he was dying, and he said, bring a paper, let me write. <laughs> so the prophet could not write the Quran. The Quran was not written at his time, right? <laughs> so he says, Go there so the prophet may write for you a statement that which you will not go astray. While the others said, Umar, when, when did he say what? Umar said, when they caused a hue and cry before the prophet, Allah's messenger said, go away, narrated uh, uh, Ubay, Ubaidullah ibn Abbas used to say, it was very unfortunate that Allah's messenger was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their dis disagreement and their, <laughs> and their nonsense. Is that how the hadith have fooled us for years? Seriously. Seriously. So, look, whenever I see a scholar, the Islamic scholars, so-called Islamic scholars on television anywhere, I see them like comedians. I'm serious. I'm serious. They are like, when I'm watching them, they are talking and they are giving the stories. I see that they're <laughs> Guys, this is Sahih Bukhari. I'm not joking. <laughs> Sahih Al Bukhari, 5,699. According to them, according to them, that means the prophet is a hypocrite. He can write. Then he pretended he cannot write for 23 years. <laughs> so he waited when he was about to die. <laughs> he said, Bring a paper. <laughs> right? And the Umar was more smarter. And the Umar was saying, <laughs> He said, no, 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 don't give him the paper. The book, the Quran is enough for us. So the first Quran he yun is Umar. And then you are here attacking us. <laughs> see? <laughs> you see the evidence? Umar himself, he said what? You have the Quran. So the book of Allah is enough for us. You see the first Quran he yun. It was Umar. And you are fully... <laughs> Wallahi, wallahi, what are you going to Allah. <laughs> you don't know reason at all. Wallahi. So the last hadith I'll give you before I end this, uh, it is narrated by uh, Talha ibn Musa, uh, what? Musarrif. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ibn Musarrif. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2000. 740. I'm having headache even. Book number 55. Hadith number 3. English reference volume 4. Book number 51. Hadith number what? 3. So it says, I asked Abdullah ibn Abu Awfa, did the prophet make a will? Listen carefully. Salam, John Gosh. Did the prophet make a will? A will means leave something behind for the people. He replied, no. I asked him, how is it then that the making of a will has been imposed on people or that they are ordered to make a will? He replied, the prophet bequeath Allah's book, which is the Quran. That means the only thing the prophet left behind for the ummah is the Quran. The Shias will tell you he left the Quran and the Alul Bayt. What do we need Alul Bayt for? The book of God is sufficient as a guidance. Is that not what Umar said? We all said it in the, see, we saw it in the hadith. Umar says the book of God is sufficient, right? Good. So the first Qurani Yun, eh? Qurani is what? Umar. <laughs> so now in this hadith, they ask whether the prophet left any will, anything. They said nothing except the Quran. That is Sahih al-Bukhari. 2740 that is in their own hadith not from me their own hadith salam uh, masabul islam so ladies and gentlemen those are the hadith books they are presenting for for you you see the, the contradictions and then the gibberish i don't believe in this hadith i'm only quoting for you to reason investigate these books the scholars bring to you ask them questions like i tell you no scholar will cross my path they are scared of me 
Wallahi. When they do programs, they are even scared to mention my name. You, I say fake, let them mention my name and see. <coughs> they are scared. Wallahi, wallahi. They are scared to mention my name. Let them try it. They think I'm bragging. Try me and see. Kataba wuta wanarana. Before I end this, Quran chapter 9 verse 34. Let me tell you something about the scholars you haven't been paying attention. God says, Ya you are lazina amanu. Listen carefully what God says. Ya you are lazina amanu. Inna kathiran min al ahabari eh? wa ruhbana wa ruhbani la yaakuluna amwal an nas bil batil. Then he says, wa yasudduna an sabilillahi. Oh you who believe indeed many of the or most of the what the scholars and the what the the monks what do they do they consume the people's money with falsehood they lie and take your monies they will tell you feasibly like come and give charity we are going to build a mosque we are going to do this we are you are building a mosque for who how many mosques do you have Check the mosque. Go to any Islamic country and see how many mosques they have in, in, in one town. What are you using it for? For your idol worship? For your shirk? You see what God will do to you on the day of judgment. While there are poor people around you are not helping them. People need schools and hospitals. You are not building that. You are wasting your time saying you are building a house for God. Do you think God is homeless? What kind of arrant garbage? Why are suduna ansabilillahi? And then they turn you away from the way of God. That's what most of the scholars are doing. They consume your money and then turn you away from the way of God. So be careful. Wallahi lazim. Especially the Hadith scholars. Hmm? The scholars who claim they are Islamic scholars, the Hadith. Let me give you a list of the, some of the scholars before I end here. Now these scholars, beware of them. Huh? I'm going to give you a list. We have Hamza Yusuf. He's in the United States. He's also Hadith scholars. They are part of the Hadith scholars. Mm? Famous Hadith Islamic converts. He's a converted. He's, a, he's a, like a white man converted to Islam. Hamza Yusuf. Then we have Abdul Abdurrahman. Abdurrahim Green. He's from Tanzania. He's a white man, but I think born in Tanzania. Then we said Hussein Yi. He's a Malaysian. Then we have Bilal Phillips. Based in Canada. We have Yusuf Estes, United States, Khalid Yassin, United States, Abdullah Al Faisal, Jamaica. Then we have Terry Hold Brooks, United States. We have Swahib <coughs> Webb, United States, Siraj Wahaj, United States, Joshua Evans, United States, Musa uh, Serent Serent New, Australia, Yusuf Chambers, United Kingdom, Umar Dexter, United Kingdom. Ustaz Muhammad in humble that is United Kingdom this is alarming most these are converts yeah they are converts these ones they reverted to Islam these ones are now scholars really scholars these ones nothing nothing baffles me like what Yusuf Estes <laughs> people are looking at listening to telling you all the garbages from the hadith books so be careful beware steady Question these people. You are you are you are proudly questioning your uh, your uh, po uh, uh, politicians, and you don't want to question your scholars, and you want to go to paradise for free. Do you think paradise is for free? Go to Quran chapter two verse two hundred and fourteen and check whether going to paradise is free. Huh? Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll try to arrange a program next time. And then we get at eight and I'll be bringing more hadith. Now, this is a lecture I'll be doing. I'll be bringing hadith discussions. We'll be going through the hadith books because a lot of people are ignorant to the fact. They don't know what the hadith says. They don't know the gibberish <laughs> and the lies and the entertainments they have in the hadith books. Right? So I'll be bringing the hadith books so that you see the evidences, right? And see the comedy, the cartoon network, uh, this thing, series <laughs> in the hadith books. So inshallah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Subhana rabbi izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.